各位觀眾，大家好。接住落嚟係同 IFF 聯合呈現嘅 Innovate for Future 創新社會可持續未來論壇。首場嘅演講主題係監控系統中的網絡安全。我哋好榮幸邀請到 SS Communication 嘅 Industry Associations and Standards Manager 胡楊先生 Mr. Nelson Wu 擔任我哋嘅演講嘉賓。事不宜遲，將以下嘅時間交俾 Nelson。Hello， 大家好。呃、我叫 Nelson， 咁就我間公司係做網絡設備生產同埋設計嘅，咁就一係 Network Camera 啦。咁喺香港咧，好多地方都見到我哋啲產品嘅啦，尤其是係機場，機場你見到所有 camera 都係我哋嘅。咁我喺呢個行業做咗超過二十年，咁咧令到有個後遺症，後遺症係咩咧？當我一出街咧，我第一件事去睇咧，就係個 camera 放喺邊一度。因為有個 camera 咧，我係 feel safe 安全啲。咁大家有冇留意呢個 cam 喺呢個場個 camera 放咗喺邊啊？見唔見到個 camera 喺邊咧？而家係啦，喺個角頭嗰度。咁呢個喺角頭係唔多嘅，佢有三四支度啦。咁佢嘅主要個作用咧係做一個 security。今日同大家講嘅呢一個 topic 咧，就係、是、cyber risk 係啦。咁喺網絡安全上面點解會產生呢一個話題呢？就因為而家我哋個社會進步咗。以前以前大家有聽到 CCTV 呢四個字，就係、是、呢個監控。咁 CC 即係 c o s e c u r i t y 佢喺自己一個範圍之內去做，所以咧就冇咩危險性嘅。而當初呢個 CCTV 咧，只係 p r 一個影像，提供影像。咁你見到睇戲都見到啦。當我要去誒揾、呃、一啲手證嘅時候咧，我要插個錄影帶落去，然之後慢慢 search， 慢慢 search search 一啲影像。但係而家唔同咗，而家我講緊係咩咧？係 beyond security， 係 security 以外嗰啲 camera 做到好多嘢。而家唔單單係 for 我哋個 security， 更甚者咧就係話佢而家唔係淨係俾個影像，而係俾個 data。大家都有聽過 big data 㗎啦 ，big data 係。蒐集好多好多嘅資料，譬如我哋而家出街，你個人樣，你著咩衫，誒、呃、高度幾多，你係男性女性，你嘅車牌幾多，所有呢啲資料咧，其實都係喺呢個 camera 咧幫你蒐集咗。係啦，除咗 security 之外咧，而家演變到係咩咧？演演變到係一個 data driven 嘅世界，即係話佢將呢啲。資訊俾咗一個系統，而呢個系統咧就係、是、透過啲資訊咧去做一啲分析，嚇已經唔同咗以前。好啦，咁以前嚟講淨係做 security 啦，而家就係做多咗嘢，就係、是、safety 同埋 operational efficiency。咩叫 safety 咧？譬如以前淨係好似呢個場咁，呢、這個場淨係影住四個角落頭，影住有冇嘢發生。但係好多時候咧，譬如有啲應用咧，就係喺誒嗰啲工地，工地我有冇戴嗰啲誒帽，我有冇著嗰啲熒光衫，我有冇著嗰啲鞋，佢都係用個 CCTV 咧去到 detect，detect 發覺哦，原來你冇著嗰件反光衣，所以佢就唔會開門俾你。就呢一啲咁樣保護一個人，就或者咧就係、是、唔知道大家有冇去過誒、呃、健身室？而家好流行嗰啲廿四小時健康身室咧，係唔需要拍卡嘅啦，已經嚇。以前拍卡有個問題咧，就係當我拍完卡之後咧，後面有個人咧，趁喺未閂門之前咧，佢會入去，咁好難 detect 嘅咁樣。嗰陣時佢個 solution 咧就要哦，我要放兩道門，先拍卡入入第一道門 ，make sure 你冇人跟住啦，我就開第二道門，咁就係好唔 efficient。而家唔需要拍卡，而家全部都係靠呢啲 CCTV。CCTV 嘅話咧，佢影到你人咧，係辨認咗你嘅人，知道你係邊一個。當你入去嘅時候咧，佢唔介意有幾多人係跟隨你入去。只要你入到去咧，入面啲 camera 咧，發現其中一個人佢唔係佢個 member 咧，佢就會通知佢個後方，通知佢哋嗰啲誒工作人員去到做一啲 announcement， 就話哦，原來你做咩人 member 嘅，但係歡迎你喺度試玩啦。如果你有興趣咧，就可以 contact 我哋邊個邊個。咁呢個係可以增加佢個 business efficiency。另外咧就係、是、safety， 係 public safety 咧就係誒唔知大家有冇誒、呃、聽過喺香港咧，我哋好多啲山啊，香港好多山，但係咧喺某一個季節咧就好容易起火嘅。咁如果我哋用人去 monitor 呢、這、一個呢一、這個環境咧，就非常之困難嘅，因為人係。
比較昂貴，同埋人會出現好多唔同嘅 mistake。但係咧，你用 camera 咧係廿四小時幫你 monitor 住。我哋其中一個 solution 咧就係 monitor 一啲山火，當山火出現嘅時候咧，佢可以報警。咁山火點樣 detect 咧？而家嘅通過 AI 嘅能力，通過 AI 能力咧，佢可以分析一個影像。影像入面如果佢有煙嘅話咧，佢會識得咩叫一個煙，咩叫一個火。嚇，透過呢個 AI 去做分析咧，就去報警。而呢一啲好多嘅呢啲 data 咧，而家已經係唔係靠影像。當個 camera 喺本身自己個 camera 入面咧，其實已經係一個好強勁嘅電腦，係一個 CPU。嗰、那個 CPU 咧係有埋嗰個 AI 嘅功能。那個 AI 咧，當你揾到個數據之後咧，會將數據 send 去你個 backend， 而唔需要將好大嘅 video send 過去。video 儲喺 local， 而數據咧就會放喺嗰個 cloud 嗰度。咁而家個世界大家都知道已經唔再係獨立運作㗎啦，所有嘢都係要經過 internet。我哋嘅生活，我哋個出行，全部都係靠個 internet。咁以前 CCTV 係放喺自己屋企。嚇，冇人攞得到，所以咧就冇咩危險性。但係而家所有嘅 data、所有嘅資料，全部都係上曬 cloud， 上曬 cloud， 透過 AI， 透過一啲誒唔同嘅物聯網嘅 sensor。譬如有一個 case 係探測嗰個河道，有啲城市入面咧好多河道嘅話咧，如果水位高過某一地某一點嘅話咧。佢 CCTV 咧會偵測到，而通知翻嗰個政府部門。咁誒、呃，由於咁嘅情況出現咧，我哋好多個 data 都已經係離開咗本身自己嘅 system。咁出現咗咩問題咧？就出現咗一個誒、呃、系統嗰個 vulnerability。咁大家頭先我講過啦，唔同嘅 use case 啦。咁喺香港你會見到好多好多 camera 逐。慢慢慢慢增加，咁喺、呃、大小場所、細質去到茶餐廳，茶餐廳你見到都會有 CCTV， 喺公路、馬場、喺機場，全部都有 CCTV， 甚至乎學校，學校入面都有好多，係保護我哋嘅資產同埋我哋嘅人身安全。好啦，出現咗咩問題呢？當你 data 離開咗之後咧，我哋發覺有個漏洞，漏洞大家都不時喺睇新聞聽到啦。邊個邊個機構佢遺失咗，有個 cyber security 嘅 issue 俾人 attack， 令到佢 lost 咗啲 data 資料，包括人嘅 ID 啊、誒、呃、記錄啊、誒佢個車牌號碼啊、佢咩時間去過邊度啊？呢啲資料咧其實係好敏感。喺 camera 咧係完全攞到曬，但係一旦如果出現咗問題之後咧，就會產生好嚴重嘅後果。譬如有啲大嘅誒 critical infrastructure， 譬如電廠啊、水廠啊、核電廠啊呢啲咧，甚至乎佢哋會受到攻擊咧，嚟到停止去提供服務，要求一個贖金啊 ransomware。好啦，咁就過去十年到啦，我哋聽到越嚟越多嘅呢啲咁嘅 vulnerability 產生嘅問題，大部分咧因為個系統冇即時更新，大部分咧都係一啲 internal insider，insider insider 有陣時係有心，有陣時冇心，多數都係冇心。譬如佢唔小心帶咗自己屋企只手指入面唔知有冇安全，插咗落去，帶咗自己 iPad 入去啦，或者佢將個 password share 俾其他人。或者用咗一個唔係好強嘅 password， 用咗啲咩誒自己自己動物嘅名啊，或者係 I love my wife 啊呢啲咁嘅 password 就好容易去俾人 hack 到嘅，係啦。咁啊，另外咧就係、是、好多機構咧仲未人有個意識就話，哦，我公司唔上網嘅，我 cut 曬啲網絡，我就好安全㗎啦，並唔安全，因為就算你唔上網嘅話咧，其實啲 attack 咧可以喺 inside 嗰度發生。你除咗俾人 attack 之外咧，其實你喺內部都可以遺失一啲資料。如果你內部冇進行一個 encryption 加密嘅時候咧，咁就非常之危險。譬如好多年前我做過嘅 case 就係、是、誒、呃、醫管局，醫管局大家唔知有冇印象記得，佢成日都唔見手指嗰啲 USB hard disk， 
啲 USB hard disk 咧，往往咧就記錄曬好多病人嘅資料，而呢啲都係一個 cyber security 嘅漏洞。就算你唔上網嘅話咧，其實呢個都會發生。好啦，有個。調查報告發現，誒、呃、呢、这個係一個真 case 嚟嘅，喺我哋美國一個客户係一個核電廠嚟嘅。呢、这個核電廠喺誒、呃、受到個攻擊啦，而令到佢停止運作咗一個禮拜，係啦。誒、呃、唔知點解嗰啲 hacker 咧特別中意去 attack 呢啲 critical infrastructure， 因為第一佢哋有錢，第二佢哋唔可以停止服務，因為譬如好似香港咁。港燈啊、中電啊，如果停電咗唔知幾耐咧，又要俾政府罰錢嚇，咁啊就好麻煩。誒、呃、喺調查發現咧，就係而家啲 attack attack 咧係非常之方便，尤其是當我哋有咗 AI 之後，有咗 AI 之後咧，個 attack 咧完全可以交俾佢嚟做，佢可以廿四小時不停咁樣選擇點，一路 attack 呢個點，一路 attack 幾分鐘唔成功，轉去第二個，一路轉轉轉轉轉到去成功為止。with 一個 AI 嘅話咧，係被 attack 嘅機會咧係非常之高，而個統計大約係每秒鐘有十三個 attack 係可以發展出嚟，係一個點喎，而有好多個點全世界，所以呢個量係非常之大。好啦，大致上呢啲 attack 其實不外乎都係幾招嘅啫，都係一啲 unauthorized access， 即係入到嚟就估。用一個方法估你個 password 啦，誒 unauthorized 嘅 access 啦，或者係用一啲誒 DDoS 嘅 test 啦，不停咁樣拼你，不停咁樣拼你，令到你服務唔到，令到你嘅 server 負荷過重而到燈。而 camera 亦都係 camera， 我試過有一個 case 咧，就係一個客，佢個 camera 咧突然間嗰個 performance 咧係 drop 得好犀利，個 CPU 用得好多，佢係不停俾人咁樣拼。一路咁樣拼，誒，就算佢哋唔成功入唔到去咧，但係嗰個數量咧，足以令到個 camera 咧運作唔到，嚇，就係、是、缺少咗呢啲 cyber security 方面嘅一個 protection 啊。另外咧，就係、是、大家唔知有冇聽過一啲殭屍，殭屍 malware 就係透過某一個電腦，可能唔知邊一個，可能係坐在其中一個你嘅電腦。中咗一個殭屍落去，透過你就發出好多攻擊，因為佢知道每一個 camera system 入面咧係好 open 同埋好開放，可以俾任何人去到 access 嘅。啊，最後就係 data privacy， 因為你知道 camera 而家唔單止攞咗影像，更多嘅咧就係更重要咧就係攞咗你資料，你係男定女啦，你去到邊度啦。你個車牌幾多啦？你中意著咩色嘅衫啦？而家喺喺誒安防入面咧，已經唔需要再去靠人眼去 search。以前要慢慢 search 幾個鐘頭、幾日一路 search。而家只要你打入個 keyword， 譬如我話誒、呃、上個禮拜三至兩個禮拜五嘅中午三點至五點，有幾多人係著住藍色衫、黑色褲喺呢個門口入嚟？咁、那個 system 就會叭叭叭叭幫你揾到曬，然之後 output 曬所有嘅嗰段時間嘅 video 俾你，係依家好方便。呢啲 data 如果漏出去嘅話咧，會形成一個非常之大嘅 impact。誒、呃，大家唔知有冇記得上年大約九月十月度啦，香港 cyberpo 亦都係俾人 attack 咗，亦都係 lead 咗呢啲資料出去，所好多嘅 credit card 啊、用戶資料啊，全部遺失咗出去，而俾人俾人勒索嘅贖金咧，只不過係區區嗰唔知幾廿萬，係好少嘅啫。但係嗰啲 data 係我哋市民嘅 data， 所以嗰個係非常之大嘅嚴重嘅後果嚟嘅。好啦，作為一個安防系統嚟講咧，佢最大嘅損失係咩咧？最大嘅損失就係佢個聲譽。當一個安防系統 suppose 佢係要嚟保護呢個環境、保護呢個公司嘅，但係佢連自己保護唔到，呢、这個聲譽嘅損失係非常嚴重。另外就係一啲 financial loss， 佢哋會受到一啲威脅或者係一啲贖金，你要交贖金。呢啲就係佢個最大嘅 impact。另外咧就係喺某啲國家咧，佢係有一個 GDPR， 佢係要保障人嘅 privacy。
譬如當你個系統如果係攞咗人嘅 information 個樣，尤其是係個樣嘅話咧，佢係可以控告你。你要從新，你要係誒 decay 就係話我究竟攞咗啲咩資料，我點樣保護你資料？但係當你一旦做唔到嘅時候咧，呢、这個係一個法律責任嚟嘅，呢、这個係。好啦，講咗咁耐，佢個誒嗰個影響係點啦？但係我哋點樣去到解決呢個問題呢？誒、呃、喺近呢幾年咧 ，cyber security 係做 camera 係一個最大嘅 topic。當我哋以前 design 一個 camera 嘅時候咧，最主要係咩呢？就係、是、最主要係研究嗰個 sensor 點樣做得好，研究嗰個 image usability 個 image 點樣做得靚睇得清。低光嘅時候點樣可以睇得到？但係而家咧，第一個 top priority 嘅考慮咧，就係、是、cyber security。我點樣首先令到我支 camera 安全？點樣令到人哋 attack 唔到我 camera？ 因為 attack camera 咧，其實 camera 佢唔係佢咁重要嘅啫，只係一個 hardware。但係佢背後成個 system 入面嗰啲資料先至係最大嘅問題。好啦。而家有唔同種種類類嘅 camera， 咁其實 camera 咧而家咧誒普遍上咧佢都有一個非常之強嘅意識 ，on cyber security， 所有 camera 咧都會有佢個 built-in 嘅 cyber security feature， 譬如佢哋會用 TPM 或者係 SE， 誒、呃、呢兩樣嘢唔知你有冇留意？大家你哋嘅 passport， 你翻去 check check 你嘅 passport，passport 底下個面底下有個金色嘅 logo。金色 logo 其實入面係藏咗一個 chipset， 而嗰個 chipset 就係而家用緊喺我哋 camera 入面。嗰、那個 chipset 係好細嘅容量，佢儲咩嘅咧？喺 passport 嚟講咧，佢係儲你嘅資料，你嘅國籍啊、出生日期啊呢啲咁嘅資料啦。喺 camera 咧，佢儲住一條 key， 一條 cryptographic 嘅 key， 佢係靠嗰條 key 去到做 encryption。encrypt 咩咧 ？encrypt 你嘅 user credential， 你嘅 username password 啦。你嘅 video 啦，而家喺呢啲 camera， 如果我要 export 個 video 出嚟，好多時候有啲人需要問我攞啲 video 去做啲蒐證，譬如係警察，警察要我攞個 video 出去，但係咧點樣可以確保呢個 video 冇俾人改過咧？而家大家都知道去改一個 video 係好容易，一個中小學生攞住個手機攞住個 app 咧就可以用好多方法咧去改變個 video。我哋呢一個咧，你可以做到啲咩咧？就係、是、用入面嗰條 key 去到加密嗰個 video， 繼而令到你可以用一個 scientific 嘅方法去 proof 呢個 video 究竟有冇俾人篡改過，可以做到呢一點。另外咧就係、是、一啲 default 嘅 security feature 啦，有好多 camera 以前冇關注到呢一點嘅，但係咧而家好多。佢喺出廠嘅時候咧，都已經去做一個 security setting， 譬如佢將一啲 port 去到刪咗，而唔俾人立亂去入嚟。呢、这個 setting 係一個非常重要嘅步驟。好啦，另外咧就係成個系統，成個系統點樣安全咧？只係靠個 camera 係絕對唔需唔夠嘅，係要成個 life cycle。life cycle 係咩咧？係要由你個產品 design 生產。運輸、物流到安裝、到使用，到最後差唔多呢個 cycle 係講緊八年到十年到，你個 camera 就要換。你個 camera 換嘅時候咧，當你要離開你 system 咧，你點樣去到 update 佢？點樣去到誒毀滅入面嘅重要資料咧？都要係成個 cyber security 嘅考慮嚟嘅。好啦，另外除咗 camera 咧，你成個系統咧，你要有,有自己嘅 cyber security 嘅一個 framework 去 protect 啦。譬如你要唔要運用一個 zero trust？zero trust 即係話所有嘅 access 咧，都係要需要進行一個 encryption 嘅認證。點樣保護入面嘅 data 啦？點樣去、呃、perform 一個 penetration test？ 當一個系統安裝咗之後咧，你會 test， 但係咧，我哋會建議客户咧，差唔多每隔一段時間，大約半年至一年，就要需要進行一個 cyber security 嘅 penetration test。而呢個 test 非常之重要，就係點樣去到翻歐一啲現有嘅漏洞，同埋點樣去到解決嗰個漏洞。
好啦，咁最後啦，最後當你成系統咧，你考慮翻點樣去到保護你嗰個 cyber risk 咧，其實有三點係非常之重要嘅，大家要誒諗、呃、清楚，就係、是、第一，呢、这個係一個 share responsibility， 唔係某一個 vendor 佢嘅責任，或者係某個 user 係一齊。當 vendor 提供咗一啲工具啊、一啲 feature 落去嘅話咧 ，user 佢要配合點樣去應用、點樣 implement、點樣去 set up。另外咧就係 cyber security 咧係一個誒、呃、長遠嘅 process， 你需要定期更新。你唔係話今日我呢個月做咗個 project， 我補貼咗安全就搞掂走人，而係你要長期一路聆聽成個 team 去到 monitor 成個 system。最後咧就係、是、個。transparency 透明度，透明度非常重要。如果好似以前發生咗好多案例，就係、是、當我受到 attack， 我冚埋咗，我唔講俾人聽，我直接俾贖金，跟住就話：，誒、哎，我俾贖金你啦，但係你合作啲，你唔好幫我去宣揚佢，或者去講俾人聽。呢樣嘢係非常差嘅。點解咧？因為當你做呢樣嘢之後咧，你就冇咗一個動力去到翻歐，究竟你個 vulnerability 喺邊度？而繼而會將呢個漏洞繼續明聽喺你個 system 嗰度嚇，所以透明誒、呃、，both 一個 vendor 或者係 user 嘅話咧，其實透明度係非常之重要嚇。呢三點咧就係、是、一個最 overall 我哋點樣可以 protect 一個 system 嘅最有效嘅方法。好啦，今日同大家分享嘅差唔多，夠鐘啦係咪啊 ？OK， 好多謝曬咁多位。多謝曬 Nelson 為我哋帶嚟咁精彩嘅分享，請 Nelson 繼續留步噶。為咗多謝你今日抽空咧嚟臨同我哋分享，大會咧亦都準備咗感謝狀送翻俾你，以表謝意。<笑>我哋有請 Business School Virtual 總監<笑>推行之小姐 Casina 為我哋致送感謝狀俾我哋嘅分享嘉賓 Nelson。好，唔该晒两位，多谢晒两位。Thank you。如果各位现场嘅朋友仲有任何问题咧，都欢迎到台下同 Nelson 继续交流噶。咁接住落嚟，我哋另外一场嘅演讲主题就系探索电子工程主题，在香港 K 十二 STEM 教育中的应用。我哋好荣幸邀请到。玉教创科行政总裁及联合创办人梁君祥先生同我哋分享，我哋将以下嘅时间交俾梁生。好 testing testing， 好咁多位大家下午好，我係嚟自 Turn E 嘅 Alex， 咁今日咧就會想同大家去分享下，即係誒今日都見到有學生喺度喎，咁不如講一講就係、是、誒、哎、微電子電子嘅一個概念，究竟點樣喺我哋學界入邊可以應用到啦？誒咁趁而家 ready 緊嘅情況之前，介紹我少少背景先。咁本身咧，我都係 electronic 嘅 industry 度出嚟㗎啦，都係個 electronic 嘅 graduation 嘅。畢業生啦，咁今次好開心咧，就受到 IFF 大會嘅邀請啦，可以同大家分享，即係除咗喺業界嗰度，我哋成日講有好多 electronic 嘅 innovation， 好似啱啱前一位嘉賓咁，誒、哎，我哋分享一啲關於 cyber security camera 嘅 application， 究竟依一堆嘅內容可能同咁多位嘅同學，或者同咁多嘅仔仔女女有啲咩關係？喺將來如果佢哋都想追上而家 Nvidia 台積電嘅 trend， 有冇啲工具學習內容可以幫到佢哋咧？咁今日會想同大家分享下嘅。好，咁首先啦，再一次特別鳴謝翻就係 HKETA 啦，同 Business School Virtual 邀請我哋參加今日嘅呢個活動嘅。咁介紹下我先啦，咁我叫 Alex， 咁我咧就係 Turn E 嘅 co-founder。而我哋 Turn E 一間咩公司咧？我哋係嚟自 Science Park 嘅一間 innovation 公司。我哋專注喺兩部分，第一部分係做 electronic solution 嘅 design， 第二部分我哋亦係一間 edtech 嘅 service provider。咁就係幫學校去設計唔同嘅導校嘅服務咁樣啦。咁呢個就係我嘅誒 team 啦。咁除咗我，咁其實我全部 core team partner 咧都係嚟自 UST 一齊創業一齊開始嘅。
。好，咁我哋喺成個同學界接觸嘅過程入邊，我哋望到有啲咩嘅困難咧？可能老師都會有一啲感受噶啦，就係講緊香港去做創科，即係大家都好想做創科。我哋咧有好多同學仔會喺唔同嘅應用範疇入邊，例如 AI 啦、IoT 啦，我哋會有好多唔同參與嘅程度，係啦。咁但係喺呢個過程入邊，我哋會望到一樣嘢就係、是，誒、哎。喺唔同嘅領域都有好多唔同嘅人才，但係好似喺 hardware 方面，尤其是一啲關於電子，甚至我哋講 semicon 嘅部分，冇咩人去講喎。依部分有個 gap， 有一個缺口。故此，我哋好希望我哋團隊可以貢獻到落去，去填補翻依樣嘢。我哋聽到其實唔同嘅持份者對依件事，即係香港缺乏硬件人才依件事，都有唔同嘅聲音㗎。唔知咁多位在座嘅前輩或者朋友會唔會有同感啦？第一個就係香港請硬件工程師好難啊！我哋 science part 度想請一個真係落到地做到 solution 嘅工程師，四萬五萬幫唔幫到手未必得添。第二樣嘢啦，啱啱 graduate 嘅學生，好似我初初畢業嗰幾年，經驗夠唔夠咧？係咪我攞兩萬二請大家入去就幫到手去做咧？都唔係喎。第三，我讀嘅話，大家都係想做 AI， 可能做 IOT， 做 software engineer， 仲有邊個會願意做 hardware 啊？問下老師都係咁樣講。我哋聽到好多老師啦，佢就話啦：第一 ，Alexa 唔係我唔想推依樣嘢啊，我唔識，我冇配套啊，完全唔識點講啊。第二樣嘢啦，依、这個領域本身好似同我哋即係你又話做工程師，但係新泥規劃方面嘅元素唔多，或者傳統咁樣去教，冇咩配合嘅話，點做到呢？第三係啦，好似我中學學員，大學係咪真係認到㗎？同學仔咁珍貴，大學嗰中學嗰六年，之後嗰三年仲要預備 DSE， 要預備 IB 嘅喎。學完依樣嘢，係咪真係做到個 matching 嘅咧？正正係因為有唔同唔同依啲嘅內容啦，所以我哋條 team 就希望可以解決大家面對嘅唔同嘅問題，去研發一個培訓微電子硬件同埋軟件人才嘅一個方案啦，俾香港可以有機會成為首屈一指嘅一個硬體研發中心。咁直接介紹我哋方案啦，其實最主要有兩大部分兩大體系嘅。咁我就喺度諗啦，一個硬件人才究竟有啲咩嘅基礎技能，佢會幫到大家手咧？咁啊兩個，第一個係 maker skills， 即係佢要將啲 hardware， 例如 at least 要將同學仔可能將 micro bit、Arduino、Raspberry Pi 整到個 application 出嚟用到啦，最 minimum level。所以我哋 introduce 一個叫 PCB makers 嘅 concept， 我哋配合內地 ECD 同埋工信辦嘅團隊啦，咁就設計咗一系列關於教同學仔點樣整 PCB 作品出嚟嘅課程嘅。第二部分啦，咁咧一個 mindset 都好緊要。例如我哋做 software program 啊，最緊要係咩咧 ？If then else 嘅 solution。咁喺 hardware 我哋有一個叫 hardware description mindset 嘅 solution 啦。所以喺呢度，我哋就會透過一個叫 FPGA 嘅新片工具，去教同學仔點樣由零開始一步一步去認識我哋 digital computing， 去整我哋 FPGA 嘅新片應用啦。甚至喺呢個基礎上面再了解咩叫 analog computing 世界嘅發展，去培訓大家一個硬件工程師嘅 mindset， 同時亦可以諗清楚新片工程師係咪你哋。未來想選擇嘅一個工具咧，咁簡單啦。喺亞洲市場，我哋都好清楚證書嘅重要性，所以我哋有證書啦，俾大家可以同大學進行到銜接啦。另外，我哋設計咗一系列好玩得意嘅一啲課程內容，去吸引翻同學仔去學啦。有唔同我哋嘅 hardware、software 嘅內容啦。咁呢度我就之後再同大家去介紹多少少啦。咁咧喺呢兩年咧，其實咧都託賴學界咧，其實都好支持我哋嘅內容嘅。咁我哋已經喺兩年咧，咁就服同三十間學校啦、機構咧合作過啦，服務超過七百個小學生啊、中學生等等。咁一個幾 impress 或者幾感恩嘅一個情況就係、是，當內地嘅專家或者東南亞嘅一啲教授嚟睇到我哋嘅 course 嘅時候，都會啊感嘆到一樣嘢就係、是，就算大陸佢哋教 PCB、教 chipset 嘅 concept 都好，都要喺大學開始。香港居然而家小學生就可以整到自己嘅電子卡片，整到自己 IoT solution， 呢樣嘢係。我哋其實好 amazing， 令到社會即係唔同地區都會感感受到我哋同學仔嘅潛力嘅。咁另外我哋又會同好多唔同嘅機構搞唔同嘅比賽啦，咁去令到我哋同學仔一個 application 嘅應用情況。咁亦有啲報紙啦，開始報導依樣嘢，希望可以藉依個內容去做到個氛圍出嚟，感染更多嘅學生去加入我哋微電子 electronic 嘅大家庭嘅。咁今日啦，反而想分享多少少一個內容。唔知大家講起新片嘅時候會諗起啲咩咧？我相信有好多朋友仔第一樣嘢諗起嘅一定係 Nvidia， 而家係股票升上去啦。同學仔啦，可能就會諗起自己嗰部電腦咁樣。咁咧喺咁多種新片工具或者咁多個工具啦，有 Arduino、Raspberry Pi、Micro Bit， 好多工具。點解我哋今日會同大家講一個工具叫 FPGA 咧 ？Why we use FPGA？ 先講一講先，我哋咧喺綜合成個內容嘅時候，我哋覺得咧要幫到同學手嘅話，我哋希望可以將依三大體系嘅內容介紹俾同學仔嘅。第一就係我哋啱啱講嘅電腦版啦、新片設計啦，同埋同時其實我哋咧都會而家研發嘅一個內容咧，就係、是、教同學仔點樣去做一啲叫做 semiconductor 嘅認知內容嘅。
。咁我哋望到啦，其實 no matter 同學仔你哋學邊個專題，例如你哋今日想做嘅 AI。IOT 啱啱講嘅 Cyber Security， 你唔可以一樣嘢嘅支持嘅硬件，而 Hardware 嘅核心係啲咩咧？係芯片。咁但係芯片呢樣嘢，老實講，台積電嘅工程師都用十年、二十年去 train 一筆嘅 talent 出嚟。我哋喺中學、小學呢個階段，究竟點樣透過科普嘅形式俾大家認知到呢個工具咧？咁我哋就先反思咗工具嘅本質啦。我喺度諗 ，generally 我哋可以點樣可以大概將芯片去進行分類呢？我哋將佢分咗四類嘅，第一類叫 CPU 啦，即係我哋好多電腦入面所用嘅通用嘅一個芯片啦。咁咧通用處理器，咁咧就適合咧我哋咧好多電腦去進行一啲。誒常規同埋 general 嘅計算任務，例如開 Excel、開 Word， 同時間用得咁嘅內容啦。GPU 呢排好出名㗎啦，咁佢係專注喺圖形處理同影像處理，而家會再多一個新嘅功能，叫人工智能嘅工具處理。ASIC 特定芯片用途、特定任務、特定設計，咁呢個咧就係、是、可能大家未必喺度見到，例如有啲 solution 係講緊可能誒、呃、一啲基建嘅應用啊，或者一啲人工智能獨特 robot 嘅應用咧，要特別去設計嘅，我哋叫 ASIC。而第四個啦 ，FPGA 佢係一個咩內容咧？佢係一個叫做可編程嘅芯片平台。咁佢就具有可編程性同埋靈活性，可以根據唔同嘅需求，你不斷嚟改變佢嘅架構，有唔同嘅一個效果俾到大家嘅。好啦，咁我就咁講咧，我知道咧，對於大家嚟講咧，可能有踢嘅一啲 talent 啦，踢嘅前輩喺度，你會聽得明。可能對下面嘅同學仔嚟講，啱啱誒 Alex 啊，你講完啲咩啊？一頭霧水。我用個比較 layman 少少嘅講法同大家講啦。城市入邊嘅交通工具，相信大家都認識㗎啦。咁我哋不如試用交通工具去形容下啱啱嘅 chip set 啦，誒 chips 嘅一啲種類啊。我會咁樣去分嘅。首先，我哋用開嘅 CPU 咧，就好似架巴士咁樣，九巴、乘巴咁樣啦。GPU 咧就好似纜車咁樣嘅。ASIC 咧專用嘅咧係一個地鐵嘅地，好似地鐵咁樣㗎啦。而 FPGA 咧就好似撥的士咁樣。我點解會咁樣去形容呢四形容佢哋嘅形容呢四種嘅芯片種類咧？首先啦，我先講咗第二啲先啦。CPU，CPU 嘅特色咧就是、general 咧，所有任務都可以處理到。佢就好似我哋城市嘅巴士嘅交通系統咁樣。例如我住屯門，我出去灣仔，我會有四到五個固定嘅路線可以幫到我出到去嘅。佢個好處係咩咧？佢個好處咧就係、是、不論咧佢係唔同嘅目的地咧，我總有辦法到到。但係中間咧未必係最快嘅方案。例如我今日如果要去銅鑼灣，我住屯門，我可能要轉兩程巴士，必須要搭九六二、九六一，跟住條路徑去行。但我可唔可以中間 skip 咗啲我唔想去嘅站，直接去到目的地咧？唔得。咁呢個就同我哋 CPU 一樣啦。CPU 咧佢係有固定嘅運作原理嘅。佢唔誒，佢、呃、每一次去運作嘅時候咧，都要根據嗰一個邏輯去進行一個誒、呃、processing 啦，我哋叫做運誒運算嘅內容。但係佢可唔可以最優化咁幫我哋解決到問題咧？唔得。咁所以佢嘅特性咧就有啲似巴士啦。GPU 咧，咁咧佢咧就係一個專注喺圖形影像相關設計嘅內容啦。咁咧簡單嚟講咧，就喺我哋誒電腦嘅世界咧，通常咧最簡單就係當我哋做 Adobe 做一啲文設計類嘅內容，打機要用到影像嘅時候就會用到佢。喺城市入邊咧，就好似纜車咁樣啦，即係觀光類嘅，我哋可能遊覽類嘅。咁係咪真係會好適合每一個工作咧？我哋要再諗一諗啦，依、這個就。咁去到 FPGA 啦，咁我直接講個 FPGA 嘅特色係咩啦？咁咧佢中佢咧就係叫現場可編程嘅陣列嘅一個架構啦。簡單嚟講，當我哋需要佢有唔同功能嘅時候咧，可以設計唔同嘅路徑，令到佢可以最優化嘅情況之下去做到我哋想做嘅任務。例如我今日想做一個誒、呃、處理一大堆數據做數據加速嘅內容，我哋都可以用佢嘅。咁佢就好誒的士咁樣啦。咁的士咧喺城市入邊咧唔同地方嘅設計，例如我今日屯門去銅鑼灣，我一定係行最快嗰條路徑嘅。咁佢咧。就可以同樣嘅效果，用最快嘅方式幫我哋解決問題。咁喺現實生活中，我哋有啲咩地方換到 FPGA 咧 ？For example， 我哋一啲超算嘅中心啦 ，FPGA 會作為一個輔助系統，加埋 GPU 唔同嘅 CPU 去成為一個新嘅架構，去幫我哋加速成個人工智能應用啦。又或者我哋喺啲金融中心入邊都會用到呢啲內容嘅。好，咁由於時間有限啦，我哋就講一講啦。點解要用 FPGA 咧？係啦 ，Arduino 唔得咩 ？Micro bit 唔得咩？真係抱歉，真係有少少唔得。當咁多位同學仔，你就學識咗點用 Micro bit、Arduino、Raspberry Pi 啲工具，或者 Net 誒 Jason Nalo 啦，相信都會有同學仔用。佢哋都係好好嘅工具，幫我哋去認識依個內容。但係具唔具備？你哋係可以自己去做一個新嘅 mindset， 做一部新嘅的士出嚟去揸到去你嘅目的地咧。我相信 FPGA 係會令到你哋更上一步嘅。係啦
。好，咁要 skip 一 skip 啦，咁我哋直接講俾例子大家睇睇啦。咁我哋係點樣去做呢個內容嘅咧？咁就會分做三個 level 去教。第一個 level 我哋會教嘅係 logic 機啦，一同零 digital circuit 嘅概念。第二部分啦，就會教你哋咧喺佢嘅專喺呢個基礎上面做一啲 sensor 同埋 actuator 傳感器同 model 等等嘅應用啦。第三部分我哋就會喺 AMD 嘅 structure 下面學下點用 f e r r a r i 去做咗相關 application 啦。咁例如，好啦，咁我哋而家資優教學院咧都開用相關嘅 course 啊。如果有同學仔或者有爹哋媽咪有興趣，都可以去報名啦。最後啦，都俾同學仔好快睇一睇翻咧，我哋嘅一啲同學仔嘅一啲 solution 咁樣，係啦，誒，稍等啊。咁呢度咧就係啱啱咧，我哋咧有一個學校咧完成咗嘅一個課程啦。咁我哋可以好快睇一睇啦。咁喺入邊啦，同學仔咧都係好似大家咁樣咧，冇咩知識點嘅啫，由零開始，咁慢慢一步一步咧去學點樣做呢個 FP tray 出嚟嘅，係啦。咁第一步啦，咁我哋咧就會教佢最簡單嘅 circuit 嘅知識啊，電腦嘅知識咁樣啦。然之後啦，咁喺入邊咧，你哋就學咗好大量關於 electronic 嘅一啲基礎知識，同埋 physics 啊、chemistry 相關嘅內容。咁同你哋嘅中四、中五學科會有好。好相關嘅內容啦，咁跟住我哋咧就會一步把步教你哋點樣去透過一啲我哋 electronic 世界一啲 tools 啊，例如 logic gate 誒啦，跟住我哋一啲誒 truth table 等等，俾你哋可以做到唔同嘅 application 出嚟。例如喺呢只 case 上面啦，我哋會做到嘅咧就係啲車仔嘅應用啦。係啦，咁呢度我可能快少少俾大家睇睇先。係啦，會做啲車仔嘅應用啦。最尾大家就可以學識點樣可以做到個 controller， 做一部 FPGA 小車去解決唔同嘅任務啦。咁我哋團隊咧，正正就係希望透過我哋做咗依一個內容出嚟，可以令到中學小學生首先認知咗依樣嘢，去到大學就會有更多時間去投入佢哋嘅 research， 咁令到咁多位老闆一出到嚟嘅時候，每一個 electronic student 都係你哋嘅戰鬥力。咁依個我哋團隊少少嘅講解啦，如果等陣有朋友仔有興趣嘅，我哋喺台下繼續交流嘅，感謝。多謝曬 Alex 咁精彩嘅分享，請 Alex 留步噶。大會為咗多謝你抽空嚟臨為我哋分享咧，亦都準備咗感謝狀送翻俾你。多謝曬。好，我哋而家有請 Business School Virtual 總監虛恆之小姐 Miss Kathina Huang 為我哋致送感謝狀，有請兩位。多謝兩位，再一次多謝曬 Alex 咁精彩嘅分享。如果現場嘅各位仲有任何問題咧，歡迎到台下同 Alex 繼續交流噶。而接住落嚟嘅時間咧，我哋另外一場嘅演講主題係知識食。我哋好榮幸邀請到聖士提反女子中學團隊嘅三位同學，同我哋分享一下佢哋嘅研究同埋成果。聖斯提反女子中學隊喺 Innovate for Future 二零二四競賽中榮獲中學組嘅冠軍，展現咗佢哋出色嘅創新能力以及對社會永續發展嘅貢獻。事不宜遲啦，我哋將以下嘅時間交俾聖斯提反女子中學嘅三位同學，有請。大家好，我哋系嚟自圣士提反女子中学嘅学生，我哋今日会介绍我哋喺 Innovate for Future 中学组赢出冠军嘅食物处理系统——知识食。香港、香港同其他大城市一样，都要面对要处理大量厨余嘅问题。香港每日产生嘅厨余占体。佔咗固體廢物嘅三成，即係超過四千六百公噸嘅廚餘，而有四成係嚟自餐飲業。政府推行咗全民識食同埋全餘收集計劃有幾年，但都因為無有因成效都麻麻。以廚餘收集計劃為例，而家仲有九成，即係超過一千六百公噸嘅廚餘，最終係去到堆填區。而家處理廚餘嘅方法有廚餘分解做堆肥，但係分類需時。而聘用收集廚餘嘅公司所需要嘅費用比處理一般垃圾要貴出三倍。廚機亦都唔普遍，因為佢哋佔地多，分解時間長，分解之後用途亦都唔多，成本效益低。第二個處理廚餘嘅方法就係捐贈食物，但食物安全存在風險，而且食物點樣分配唔容易處理，加上運輸成本高，而且需要額外人手做分類處理，所以呢個方法都唔普遍。咁最容易咪就係抌去堆填區咯，但係堆填會對環境造成不良影響，而且浪費食物其實都好消耗社會資源。
既然處理廚餘咁困難，有效減少製造廚餘先係可行方案。為咗解決以上問題嘅成因，我哋團隊進行咗訪問同埋做咗問卷調查。首先，我哋發現食肆為咗提高盈利，成日推出唔同嘅推銷方法，同埋提供大量嘅選擇，準備過多食材，造成大量嘅浪費。另外，食肆傾向供應過多嘅份量，以大件格底食嚟招來生意，導致成日出現食唔曬嘅情況。以我哋問卷調查所得，超過八成嘅受訪者都經歷過食唔曬嘅情況。知識食嘅目嘅系統係知識食系統嘅目標係實行源頭減廢，喺食材過期之前就消耗曬佢哋，同時減少喺食唔曬嘅情況，咁就可以大量減少廚餘嘅產生，減低成本之餘，又唔使再浪費食物。知識食系統包括智能餐牌、智能食物櫃同埋雲端數據庫。佢主要運用減價促銷嘅手法，盡快消耗曬啲食材。數據庫係用 Firebase 寫嘅，系統利用食物存貨嘅數據更新餐牌，餐牌連接食物櫃，因應點餐同埋購入新食材，然後再更新雲端數據庫。咁，等我哋而家嚟睇下個示範啦。咁職員只需要喺餐牌度撳咗更新掣咧，就可以將個餐牌連接去誒、呃、雲端數據庫嗰度噶啦。咁就誒、呃、系統就誒咁，佢、呃、就會因應食材嘅到期日啦，同埋佢哋嘅剩餘數量咧，去自動調整間菜式嘅價錢嘅。咁職員就唔需要去廚房嗰度去檢查整翻啲乜嘢食材啦。咁至於乜嘢條件減價咧，都可以因應食肆嘅要求去、呃、定嘅。咁、呃、例如啦，就喺兩日之內到期同埋數量剩翻四十件或以上嘅話咧，就係、是、需要促銷嘅食材。咁所以喺呢個例子入面嘅話咧，就有番茄啦、牛排、牛肉啦，同埋雞蛋係需要。促銷嘅食材啦，咁撳咗個定制之後啦，個餐牌上面嘅價錢就會自動更新。我哋可以睇一睇個例子啦。嗱，例如喺呢個 C 餐入面咧，就有一副一個誒雞蛋嘅呢個食材啦。咁所以咧就會打一個誒九五折俾佢。而上面嘅嗰一個 B 餐咧，就兩款食材，即係番茄同埋牛肉。咁嘅話就會打一個誒九折俾佢。咁呢啲減價嘅菜式咧，都會有一個識食推介嘅標誌，就去吸引翻顧客佢哋點選呢啲餐嘅，咁就可以快啲消耗嗰啲食材。咁顧客喺呢個餐牌嗰度點咗餐之後咧，呢、這個餐牌就會將嗰啲資料咧傳送去個食物櫃度，食物櫃就會因應住菜式所需要嘅食材咧，利用個摩打將呢啲食材咧轉出嚟。咁所以而家呢個例子入面，就西蘭花啦、飯同埋雞排咧送咗出嚟啦。咁我哋就利用咗電子化咧去落單同埋送出食物嘅，咁處理數據咧都係全自動噶啦，咁所以咧誒誒呢個就係我哋嗰個流程圖啦。咁頭先我哋講嗰啲係其實點樣做到嘅呢？咁首先啦，嗰啲資料就全部記錄曬喺雲端數據庫嗰度嘅，咁都記錄住菜式所需要嘅食材啦，同埋佢哋嘅食材數量嘅。例如呢個黑椒、呃、牛排配粟米薯角咧，就需要呢三種食材。咁呢啲食材咧就、呃、會有寫到佢哋嗰個數量同埋嘅到期日嘅，就係即係畫面呢個四廿八同埋嗰五月十七號咁樣啦。咁數據庫就會用誒、呃、程式將佢哋呢啲食材數量同埋存放日期咧連去個餐牌嗰度顯示出嚟嘅。咁撳咗掣之後咧，個程式就會開始計數啦。如果有一件係符合食係符合條件嘅，就會打個九五折；有兩件嘅話，就會打個九折俾佢。咁誒落咗單之後咧，誒佢哋都會將呢啲資料咧係傳送翻去食物櫃度啦，就係將呢啲數字咧變翻做一，即係要拎出嚟嘅意思。咁就誒程式就會連喺一個 Adjudo 嘅程式嗰度，咁咧將呢啲資料傳送翻去食物櫃嗰度，然後咧就誒轉送翻出嚟，送翻出嚟，完成咗之後啲數字咧就會轉翻做零㗎啦。咁我哋就會以益上一個形式啦，去輸出呢一啲嘅點餐記錄同埋食材嘅消耗記錄，去方便分析翻啲受歡迎嘅菜式同埋應該訂購啲乜嘢食材同埋買幾多。知識食都會同時為每樣嘅菜式提供大中小份量嘅選擇。咁喺餐牌度都會顯示卡路里值。顧客可以按照佢哋所需要嘅攝取量去選擇合適嘅份量啦，就減少食唔曬嘅情況。咁而價錢都會同卡路里值掛鈎啦，就可以鼓勵佢哋食幾多嗌幾多啦。為咗更快咁樣去消耗食材咧，當某種食材如果佢哋即將到期啦，同埋一剩餘嘅數量過多咧，系統就會將啲食材咧自動去列入食材外賣嘅清單入邊。咁食肆就可以選擇誒喺智能餐牌度加入呢個食材外賣啦，就去俾啲顧客咧選擇去買走佢哋嘅外賣食材。一方面可以令到食肆加快消耗啦，減少誒嗰啲食材嘅儲存量啦，去避免廚餘嘅產生啦。同時咧，亦都可以令到顧客用相宜嘅價錢咧去買呢啲食材，一舉兩得嘅。咁誒知識食嘅呢一個雲端數據庫咧，都儲存咗唔誒食材嘅儲存量啦。例如係誒每一次誒職員佢哋買啲食材擺入去個食物櫃嗰陣啊，或者係當啲食物櫃誒送出嗰啲食材嗰陣咧，嗰啲食材嘅剩餘數量咧都會係自動更新嘅。咁過程全部都係自動化㗎啦，同埋咁都可以提升咗嗰個準確度咯。
，食材嘅消耗記錄咧係可以用嚟做數據分析嘅，咁就可以幫食肆去準確咁樣預算啲食材嘅數量啦，就避免買多咗食材咁樣就可以減少翻個浪費。咁而誒雲端數據庫亦都有嗰個每日嘅點餐記錄啦，咁就可以幫食肆知道最受歡迎嘅菜式係啲乜嘢，咁食肆就可以因應學誒顧客佢哋嘅嗰啲口味啦，去調整嗰個餐牌，咁就可以吸引更加多嘅顧客，從而去提升佢哋嘅銷售額。我哋都做咗一個可行性嘅調查啦，就揾咗三十位唔同嘅唔同年齡嘅市民咧，就俾咗一個普通嘅餐牌同埋一個知識式嘅餐牌俾佢哋，睇下佢哋嘅點餐項目係啲乜嘢。咁結果顯示到呢。其實大家咧係有六成嘅受訪者咧係改變咗個選擇，而去揀一啲有色食推介嘅菜式嘅。咁除此之外啦，我哋都問過餐廳經營人咧，其實認為減價促銷呢個方法咧係有效嘅，即係嗰啲九折啊、九五折，覺得佢哋覺得係 O K 嘅。咁其次咧，亦都有五成嘅受訪者係因應嗰個價錢嘅減少啦，而去改選咗份量係中或者少嘅菜式嘅。咁樣做之後，其實平均減少咗二十二 percent 嘅浪費，證明減價促銷係有效嘅。咁其實知識式咧對對唔同嘅持份者都有好處嘅。咁顧客方面咧，因為減價就唔係等到最後嗰日先至做嘅，咁所以食物嘅質量就冇改變啦。但係就唔會少少咗呢個選擇嘅情況嘅。但係就可以用一個平啲嘅價錢去購買到相同份量嘅食物。而且咧，智能餐牌上面咧都有顯示各種菜式所提供嘅卡路力。卡路里值啦，咁就可以鼓勵顧客去關注佢哋嘅健康啦，避免攝取過多嘅卡路里啦，咁就可以減低呢個肥胖所引致嘅健康風險啦。咁有個知識式咧，顧客咧就可以食得更加抵啦，更加健康啦，又冇少咗選擇嘅情況，誒、呃、就可以做到呢個全民參與減源頭減費啦，減少廚餘啦，因為因為呢個系統係有識食呢個元素啦，咁佢同時都可以提高咗市民對於廚餘問題嘅關注嘅。咁對於餐廳而言咧，呢、这個食材儲存記錄就可以幫助食肆誒、呃、準確預算佢哋購入幾多食材啦，咁就唔會嘥曬啲食材啦，同時都可以減少因為選擇誒、呃、即係選材料選得過多，然之後導致浪費嘅呢個經濟損失嘅。咁如果餐廳唔使購買廚機啦，同埋唔使俾人誒、呃、錢回收誒呢啲廚餘啦，咁就可以節慳咗好多嘅人力資源啦。除此之外咧，亦都可以透過點餐記錄去得知最受歡迎嘅菜式啦，同埋吸引更加嘅顧客啦，誒更加多嘅顧客啦，仲可以知道所需要補充邊啲嘅食材。點餐同埋記錄嘅過程咧，完全係唔需要人工嘅，誒、呃、咁所以系統裏邊咧，仲可以提供呢個正餘食材同埋點餐嘅數據啦，計算同埋改變價錢咧都係全自動化嘅，咁自然咧就可以慳卻呢個人力資源啦。最後咧，使用知識嘅系統咧，可以提升公司嘅環保形象啦，咁同埋提升公司嘅呢個聲譽啦，咁就可以吸引更多嘅顧客。咁對於社會而言咧，我哋就唔需要再浪費金錢喺處理廚嘅身上啦。咁因為知識就可以做到由源頭減廢，咁就可以減少製造廚餘，而嗰啲嘅資源咧就可以用喺其他有需要嘅地方。另外咧，廚係運送過程同埋運送到堆填區之後咧，都會產生大量嘅温室氣體啦，咁就會加劇呢個温室嘅效應，咁就誒、呃、減少廚咧就可以減少呢個温室氣體嘅排放啦，咁就可以減慢呢個地球暖化嘅情況啦。而且呢個堆填區咧，而家就面臨緊飽和啦，咁源頭減廢就可以減慢呢個堆填區廢物增加嘅速度啦，同埋減少棄置廚所用嘅土地啦，咁嗰啲土地咧就可以用嚟做其他嘢啦。咁喺商業計劃方面咧，我哋就會採取一個好靈活嘅做法嘅。咁因為每間餐廳所以佢哋用嘅誒，佢、呃、用誒唔、呃、同嘅食材去制定佢哋唔同嘅價錢啦。咁例如普通小型嘅快餐店，咁佢哋每個智能食物櫃，我哋就諗住製造成本係四千蚊啦。咁為咗鼓勵佢哋用咧，我哋定價就唔會定得太高嘅。咁一開始我哋就會定價係五千蚊一個嘅。咁如果食肆嘅規模比較大，佢哋就可能會買多幾部嘅呢個智能食物櫃啦。咁所有餐廳都需要一個智能餐牌啦，同埋一個連接雲端數據庫嘅呢個程式嘅。咁呢個連接雲端數據庫嘅程式就係售價為一千蚊啦。所以我哋賣出一個智識食系統咧，就可以攞到二千蚊嘅盈利啦。咁市場潛力方面咧，香港就大約有二萬八千間嘅食肆啦。如果有誒五 percent 嘅食肆願意購買我哋嘅知識食，咁公司就可以攞咗呢個三百萬嘅盈利。不過賺錢咧都唔係我哋單一嘅目標，咁我哋希望可以為、呃、地球減少呢個浪費啦，咁就可以為持續發展做一分力啦。
。宣傳方面咧，我哋就打算首先同一啲連鎖店合作啦。咁因為佢哋嘅經費比較多啦，而且佢哋係唔同店鋪嘅菜式都係重複嘅，所以咧就相對容易大量咁樣生產。咁咧我哋就可以容易即係賣得平價啲啦，同埋公司都有 ESG 嘅要求啦。咁佢哋係採用我哋嘅可能性咧都會比較大嘅。同時咧，我哋都會同一啲環保組織推廣啦，例如綠色和平啊、長春社等等啦，亦都會通過唔同嘅媒體去做宣傳啊，例如 View TV 啊、Instagram 等等嘅平台啦，咁去提升呢個知名度啦，同埋製造一個誒誒、呃呃、環保嘅形象咯。咁當有一定數量嘅食肆去參加呢個計劃之後咧，我就會向成功減少超過五成廚餘嘅食肆去頒發呢、這個、呃、街去獎狀嘅同埋價錢嘅優惠啦。咁就可以做到呢個以後相傳啦，令到更多嘅餐廳都知道呢個紫色食。咁未來呢，我哋都會改用應用程式輸入啦，等到食肆可以自己咁樣去更改佢哋嘅菜式啦，同埋誒價錢嘅。咁我哋亦都希望可以將呢個知識食推廣到超級市場啦，同埋食物嘅分銷商啦，利用電子嘅呢個價錢牌同埋、呃、自動為呢個食物減價嘅。咁樣亦都會同時推出呢個智能貨架啦，咁就等到顧客先買就即刻到、呃、即係即將到期嘅貨品啦，咁之後就可以減少製造呢個浪費啦。咁以上咧就係我哋嘅分享啦，咁多謝大家。多謝曬聖士提反女子中學三位同學咁精彩嘅分享，請你哋留步。我哋為咗表達謝意咧，多謝你哋嚟臨分享，大會都準備咗感謝狀送翻俾你哋噶。現在有請 Business School Virtual 總監圈行之小姐 Miss Christina 圈為我哋致送感謝狀，有請。OK， 唔該曬咁多位，請各位回座。如果現場嘅朋友對於剛才三位同學嘅分享仲有任何嘅提問咧，都歡迎可以去去到台下咧，同咁多位交流下噶。而接住落嚟咧，我哋好高興邀請到嶺南大學博士生譚祖成先生為我哋帶嚟嘅演講主題係 Sit 公共空間座椅管理的整體框架。事不宜遲，將以下嘅時間交俾譚生。Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tan Chu Sheng. Uh, you can just simply call me Alan. So I'm a third-year PhD student from Lingnan University um, School of Data Science. Um, before I start, I would like to thank uh, IF to invite me for this uh, today's share. So today I'm going to talk about the SEAT, um, S E A T. So this is the framework for SEAT management in public space. So uh, nowadays, uh, AI, ChatGPT is getting really, really popular these days, right? Uh, everyone can use ChatGPT, uh, writing email to your boss, uh, making your own PowerPoint so that you can uh, do a, a better presentation. But however, all those applications are for uh, those using ChatGPT on the internet, right? However, for those like in the physical life, right? It's really hard to use ChatGPT. So let's say you're going to a library or you're going to the restaurant. Can ChatGPT uh, find you a clean space? No, right? So that means ChatGPT is restricted uh, used in uh, internet, but for those physical user case, it's not uh, explore. So let's take an example here. So uh, I believe all of you uh, have faced this situation, right? So in Madonna, in library, so scenario number one, in library, um, okay, let's say you are going to a library and uh, you want to find yourself a seat uh, and you found the seat is empty and you, when you are approaching that seat and you found that, okay, there's something on the table. What does that mean? It means the user is using 
its own personal belongings hugging this uh, table so that it can use uh, when everything's done. So meaning, the seat is occupied by someone else with their personal belongings, but he is not using the seat. So in that case, the seat is not fully uh, like effectively utilized by people. And also in our second scenario in Madonna here, and you can see that it is full of those uh, dishes that used by the previous customers, right? So when you walk in, you are not able to use those seats because it's full of those things there. So you need to wait. You need to ask uh, for help to clean those tables. So in that case, those tables are not fully used like in an efficient way. So can we solve that situation? Yes. Uh, we are proposing SIT. SIT is a management system that can fully uh, automatically manage the public facility. So let's say uh, here, with our system, we can save more human resources because the whole system is rely on the, um, I would say, uh, a system that can do automatically management uh, for those seats. And second, uh, our system can enable better utilization for public facility. And finally, uh, our system can reduce the table hugging. So what is table hugging? Table hugging means uh, people using their own personal belongings, putting those belongings on the table so that these people can occupy this table. So they will use this table after you come back, something like that. So our system is providing a solution like this. So in the upper part, uh, so those are the situation. So first situation that uh, you can see there, uh, the table is empty, and the second one, the table is occupied. The third one is the table is hugging, right? So for our uh, seat management system, we can uh, arrange a web application. That application can do real-time monitoring of the status of the table, okay? Uh, so for the web application, uh, we are designed it for cell phone. And for that one, we can uh, see that if the app, uh, I would say the seat uh, system, if the seat system uh, can detect, okay, the table is empty, then it will show in green color, and it is like the table is empty, it's open for everyone to use. And if the table is occupied by a person, meaning this person is using this table, it will show as yellow color. It may, means it is occupied by user. And if the table is occupied by uh, things like MacBook, PC, backpack, those things, but the people, the users is not there, then we will consider this is hogging, so table hogging. So for our uh, system, it will show as red color. Okay, it means the table is hogged by objects. And if in that situation, uh, we will alert the uh, management person to clean here, to clean the table so that the table are uh, back to the uh, uh, green color, back to like free for everyone to use. And that is our uh, system. So in this part uh, shows the um, construction of our system. So our system includes lots of uh, sensor there. So the sensors will detect the objects on the table as well as the seat. So we will detect them and send the data back to the seat model. So the seat model is accepting those um, data from the sensor. So those data are current of the sensor, uh, voltage of the sensor, and also the frequency of the sensor. So for the model there, the SIP model is accepting those inputs and generate the output. Okay, the output should be one of the third choice, right? One is occupied by person, one is clean, one is hogging by object, right? So those results will be saved to the database as well as transferred to the cell phone, which is our web application. 
So in that case, users can uh, monitor the uh, status of the table in real time manner. So uh, because we also save the data to the database, the cloud database. So in that case, the user can also check the historical status of the table. So that is our, uh, our system. We can do monitoring, uh, real time monitoring, and also we can check the historical data. So since our system is uh, scalable, efficient, adjustable, and also timely, so we will measure our system, our solution, with the existing solution here. So we will compare in this four dimension. So our system is uh, a seed system, right? So for the existing solution, meaning um, the company or the uh, uh, company is hiring one person for uh, monitoring those tables. If the table is full of something, you need to go there and clean it. So basically hiring one person, do everything. So the cost here, if you use our system, it should be around 1300 to 1400 But if you're hiring a person, which costs you around 13000 So it means our solution is only 10% like, of the existing solution, right? Which costs you less. So everything related to human resources costs you a lot. Um, also for efficient, uh, our system uh, can handle all tables w in a really fast way. And for the, hum uh, for the human here, uh, it requires time to go around, check, maybe he's like watching cell phone, something like that. And that's why it will cost you longer time. And for the adjustable, uh, our system can fast adapt to a new uh, environment. However, for the uh, existing solution, it may require some time for the management team uh, to adapt in the uh, environment. And finally, is the uh, timely, which means that um, our system can do real-time monitoring. However, for the existing solution, no, there's nothing. Uh, in the right-hand side here, in the right-hand side, we can see that uh, those are the algorithm behind our model. So uh, basically, the meaning is that, so remember that uh, our model, okay, our model is accepting the uh, data from sensor, right? The sensor data go in, the result goes out, right? So for this one, uh, for the algorithm behind this model, uh, the model is going to uh, utilize machine learning to, uh, I would say, classify. Uh, classify the data is normal data, so the, the data is in a normal range, or it is like fluctuated a lot. So if the data is fluctuated a lot, like the red color here, if it is fluctuated a lot, it means that it is not normal state. If it is normal state, then it means the table is clean. It is free to use. You can just go and use the table. If it is fluctuated, it means that the sensor is detecting, okay, uh, the table with, is covered with something. Maybe it's occupied by a people, maybe it's occupied by a, uh, some objects. So we will further classify those data and see whether it is occupied by people or by object. So this uh, the user case. Um, our system is really, uh, I would say, a perfect fit for those libraries in university. Because in university, the, um, those tables, we have a lot of table in the library. And if you want to check, like, uh, the table is hogging by something uh, or it is used by people, you need to hire a lot of human to check those, right? If you are hiring people, it means it will cost you a lot. So that's why our system is a perfect fit for those uh, tables in libraries. Um, the second one is uh, those food court. Um, if we are talking about uh, food court ca or canteen in the university, uh, you can ask students to clean their own table after they use the table, right? However, for those food court uh, in the shopping mall, okay, you are not 
able to like tell every customer to clean their own table after they use it, right? So in that case, our system can go in and uh, solve that situation. And if all the tables is with our uh, man uh, seat system, then if the table is full of uh, those uh, things required to clean, then it will like alert those management personnel to clean those tables. So uh, these are the comparison uh, of our system, SIT, with other solutions. So for Xinhua there, uh, Xinhua library solution, they have uh, enabled web application and also the function of booking tables. But for our system, we cover everything there. So we are enabling the real-time monitoring, as I mentioned before. Uh, we have uh, enabled the web application uh, booking table and table cleaning services. So those are the things we already enable. And for the near future, we will also enable the robotic services. So what, what does that mean? So basically, if, you are, if our system is detecting, OK, uh, the table is full of uh, things that you need to clean, then the robotic services team goes in, clean everything for you. And that is our like the, the research we are doing right now. Uh, we got into the market uh, size here. Um, in Hong Kong, uh, the market is really, really huge. Um, around 12.6K uh, numbers of uh, restaurants and library in Hong Kong. It means that they have a lot of seat, like required to use our, our system, right? So those, uh, among those uh, restaurants and libraries, around uh, 70K seats are located in those courts and libraries. And only 10% of them are equipped with those AI-enabled features, such as seat here. So that means we have a really, really huge market size. And uh, we are proposing two models here, business model. And for the first one, um, we are doing a subscription, like premium services. And we can, uh, call, uh, we can like, uh, post that. OK, it, it requires you 10 Hong Kong dollar per month so that you can use our service for one table with one to four chairs. So with that, 10 Hong Kong dollar per month, you can use that service. However, if you want to use the maintenance, okay, uh, if you want to use the maintenance and also the, um, uh, the hosting services, you need to pay. And also for the same as the one-time pay here. So if you are paying 3,000 Hong Kong dollar, you can buy the whole set of hardware. And however, you also need to pay uh, for the hosting and uh, maintenance services. So these are the milestones. Uh, January 2023, uh, we have planned this whole thing. And we have uh, do development uh, from February to March. And after March, after May, we have uh, the whole system ready. And we have tested that the whole system is performed uh, better and better. Uh, before I before I finish my talk, I would say I would share a, a story here. So uh, recently, uh, robot tax, which is autonomous uh, taxi, so meaning those taxi can do self-driving, okay, is uh, becoming popular in mainland China. So some of my friends uh, use those services in Wuhan. It's, it's in Hubei. Okay, those services they think okay, it is really uh, close to the uh, services that provided by uh, Uber or DD, those rail hailing system. The services is closed. However, the price is the main point here. So the price of those autonomous taxi, always a robot taxi, only half of the price of the Uber. Okay, and that's that means that um, AI can. Uh, improve our life with robotic 
as I mentioned, AI uh, is now uh, used really wide in the internet. However, for those uh, like user case in physical world, it's not as much explored. But here, we have a robot taxi, and in the near future, we will have our a more robotic team for uh, providing better services. And I think that's all. Thank you. 多谢晒谭生嘅分享，请留步。大会为咗多谢你抽空嚟临同我哋分享，亦都准备咗感谢状送俾你噶。我哋有请 Business School Virtual 总监圈恒之小姐 Casina 为我哋致送。唔该晒，多谢晒两位。